The Somalis are an East Coast ethnic group native to the Horn of Africa, who share a common ascentry, culture, and history. The Somali language is the sacred mother tongue of ethnic Somalis, which is part of a Cushitic branch of the Afro-Asiatic language family and are predominantly Sunni Muslim. They form one of the largest ethnic groups on the African continent and cover one of the most expansive land masses by a single ethnic group in Africa. According to most scholars, the Aztec land of Punt and its native inhabitants former part of the ethnogenesis of the Somali people. An Aztec historical kingdom where a great portion of their cultural traditions and ancestry has been said to derive from Somali share many historical and cultural traits with other Kushitic peoples, especially with Lovdam East Kushitic people, especially the Afar and the Saho. Ethnic Somalis are principally concentrated in Somalia, around 2 million and 8,000. Ethiopia, four millions and six thousand. Somaliland, three millions and half. Kenya, two millions and eight thousand. And Djibouti, five hundred and thirty-four thousand. Somali diasporas are also found in parts in parts of the Middle East, North America, Western Europe, African Great Lakes region, Southern Africa and Oceania. Samaale, the oldest common extensor of several Somali clans, is generally regarded as the source of the ethnomic Somali. One other theory is that the name Israel to be derived from the word so and ma, which together mean go and milk. This interpretation differs depending on the region with northern Somalis simply in reference to go and milk in regards to the camel's milk. Southern Somalis use the Transliteration Sa Maal, which refers to Kam's milk. This is a reference to the ubiquitous pastoral lines of the Somali people. Another plausible etymology proposes that the third Somali is derived from the Arabic from wealthy. Thawamo again referring to Somali riches in livestock. Alternatively, the ethnic toning Somali is believed to have been derived from the Automoli as much a group of warriors from ancient Egypt described by Herodotus, were well likely of Weshwesh origin according to Flinders Petri, as much is thought to have been the Egyptian name, with Itomoli being a Greek derivative of the Hebrew word Somali, meaning on the left hand side. An ancient Chinese document from the 9th century CE referred to the northern Somali coast which was then part of the broader region 
in northeast Africa known as Barbara, in reference to the areas Berber Cushitic inhabitants. As Po Pa Li, the first clear written reference of the sobriquet Somali, however, dates back to the 15th century during the conflict between the Sultanate of Ifat based Angela and the Solomic dynasty. The Abyssinian emperor are one of the, his court official composed a hymn celebrating a military victory over the Sultan of Ifat's eponymous troops. Simur was also an ascent Harari alias from the Somali people. Somalis overwhelmingly prefer the denomin Somali over the incorrect Somalian sign. The former, the former is an endonym, while the latter later is an exonym with double suffixes. The hypernym of the term Somali from a geopolitical sense in Horner and from an ethnic sense it is Kushid. The origin of the Somali people, which were previously theorized to have been from southern Ethiopia some 1000 BC or from the Arabian Peninsula in the 11th century has now been overturned by newer archaeological and linguistic studies which puts the original homeland of the Somali people in Somaliland, which concludes that the Somalis are the ingenious inhabitants on the Horn of Africa for the last 7,000 years. As the end of painting, with the date back 5,000 years estimated, had been found in Somaliland. This engraving depict early life in the territory. The most famous of these is the Las Gael complex. It contains some of the earliest known rock art on the African continent and features many elaborate, elaborate pastoral lists, exchange and animal of animal and human figures. In other places, such as the Da Hambalin region, a this depiction of a man on a horse in postulate as being one of the earliest known examples of an mountain huntsman. Inscriptions have been found beneath many of the rock paintings, but archaeologists have so far been unable to the deeper form of ancient reading. Died in the Stone Age, the Doyan and Argeisan culture flourished here with their respective industries and factories. The oldest evidence of burial customs in the whole of Africa comes from cemeteries in Somalia dating back to 4th millennium BC. The stone implements from the Jalelo site in Somalia are said to be the most important link in evidence of the universality in Paleolithic times between the East and the West. In antiquity, the ancestors of the Somali people were an important link in the Horn of Africa connecting the region's commerce with the rest of the ancient world. Somali sailors and merchants were the main suppliers of frankincense, myrrh, and spices. Items which were considered valuable luxuries by the ancient Egyptians, Phoenicians, Mycenaeans, and Babylonians. According to the most scholars, the ancient land of Punt and its native inhabitants formed part of the 
ethnogenesis of the Somali people. The Astyans Puntites were a nation of people that had close relations with Pharaonic Egypt during the times of Pharaoh Sahure and Queen Hatshepsut. The pyramidal structures, temples, and ascent houses of dressed stone littered around Somalia may date from this period. In the classical era, the Macrobians, who may have been essential to be autumnally or as the Somalis established a powerful tribal kingdom that rivaled really large parts of modern Somalia. They were reputed for their longevity and wealth, and were said to be the tallest and handsomest of all men. The Macrobians were warrior herders and seafarers. According to Herodotus' account, the Persian emperor Cabis II, upon his conquest of Egypt, 525 BC, sent ambassadors to Macrobia bringing luxury gifts for the Macrobian king to entice his submission. The Macrobian ruler, who was elected based on his stature and beauty, replied instead with a challenge for his Persian counterpart in the form of an unstrung bow. If the Persians could manage to draw it, they will have the right to invade his country. But until then, they shall thank the God that the Macrobian never decided to invade their empire. The Macrobians were a regional power reputed for their abbasin, architecture, and gold wealth, which was so plentiful that they shanked the prisoners in golden chains. After the collapse of Macrobia, several Astian city states such as Opose, Esina, Sarapion, Nico, Malau, Damo, Ambosilon, near Cape Guardafui, with comp with the Sabaeans, Parthians, and Ashumites, for the wealthy in the Greco Roman trade also flourished in Somalia. Islam was introduced to the area early on by the first Muslims of Mecca, fleeing persecution during the first Hejira with Masik al Qiblatain being built before the Qibla towards Mecca, the town of Sailas to Mihraba Maxim al Qiblatain dates to the 7th century and is the oldest mosque in Africa. Consequently, the most the Somalis were some of the earliest non Arabs that converted to Islam. The peaceful conversion of the Somali population by Somali Muslim scholars in the following centuries, the Asian city states eventually transforming into Islamic Mogadishu, Berbera, Seila, Parawa, Hafun, and Merka, which were part of the Berberi civilization. The city of Mogadishu came to be known as the city of Islam and controlled the East Africa gold trade for several centuries. The Sultanate of Ifat, led by the Walashma dynasty with its capital at Seila, ruled over parts of what is now Eastern Ethiopia, Djibouti and Somaliland. The historian 
al Umari record that Ifat was situated near the Red Sea coast and state state its site and 15 days travel by 20 days travel its army number of 15,000 hor horsemen and 20,000 foot sol soldiers al umani also credits ifat with seven modern cities belkurser kurhura shimi Shewa, Adal, Yameh, and Labo. In the Middle Ages, several powerful, powerful Somali empires dominated the regional trade, including the Ajuran Sultanate, with ex excellent in hydraulic engineering and fortress building. The Adal Sultanate whose general Ahmed ibn Ibrahim al-Qasi, Ahmed Gurey, was the first commander to use cannon warfare on the continent during Adal's conquest of the Ethiopian Empire and the Sultanate of the Haledi, whose military dominance forces governors of the Oman Empire north of the city of Lamu to pay tribute to the Somali Sultan Ahmed Yusuf. The Harla, an early group who, who inhabited parts of Somalia, the Charter and other areas in the Horn, also erected various tumuli. These Mazons are believed to have been ancestral to the Somalis, proto Somali. Berbera was the most important port in the Horn of Africa between the 18th to 19th centuries. For centuries, Berbera had extensive trade relations with several historic ports in the Arabian Peninsula. Additionally, the Somali and Ethiopian interiors were very dependent of Berbera for trade where most of the goods for sport arrived from. During the 1833 trading season, the port town is really to over 70,000 people and upwards of 6,000 camels laden with goods arrived from the interior within a single day. Berbera was the main marketplace in the entire Somali seaboard for various goods produced for the interior, such as livestocks, coffee, frankincense, myrrh, agassia gum, saffron, feathers, gehe, hide, that means skin, gold, and ivory. Historically, the port of Berbera was controlled indig indigenously between the mercantile Rer Ahmed Nur and Rer Yunus Nuh subclan of the Habar Awal. According to a trade journal published in 1856, Berbera was described as the freest port in the world and the most important trading place on the world Arabian Gulf. As a tributary of Mocha, which in turn was part of the Ottoman position in Western Arabia, the port of Seila has had seen several main places and governors over the years. The Ottoman bases in Yemen held nominal authority of Seila when Sir Marke Ali Saleh, who was a successful and ambitious Somali merchant, purchased the rights of the town from the Ottoman governor of Mocha 
and Hodeida. However, the previous governor was not eager to relinquish his control of Seila. Hence, in 1841, Sarmarke chartered two Dahoms ships along with 50 Somali mad look men and two cannons to target Seila and depose its Arab governor Syed Mohammed al Bar. Sarmarke initially directed his cannons at the city was with flighted and bars, followers and ghosts, then to abandon the post and succeeded al Bar and the ruler of Seila. Sir Marker governorship had an instant effect on the city and he maneuvered to the monopolies as much of the regional trade as possible with his sights set as far as Harar and the Ogaden. In 1845, Sarmarke deployed a few matchlock men to wrest control of neighboring Berbera from that town's then feuding Somali local authorities. Sarmarke's influence was not limited to the Somali coast as he has alias and influence in the interior of the Somali country. The Danakil coast and even forming a field in Abyssinia. Among his alias were the kings of Sewa. When there was tension between the Amir of Harar, Abu Bakr II ibn Abd al Munan and Sam Sarmarke. As a result of the Amir arresting one of his agents in Harar, Sarmarke persuaded the son of Sahle Selassie, ruler of Sewa, to imprison on his behalf about three. 100 citizens of Harar, then resident in Sewa, for a left of two years. In the late 19th century, after the Berlin Conference had ended, the scramble for Africa reached the whole of Africa, increasing foreign influence of the region, alarming the leaders of Duhur Bahante Garat and Darawish King Dirije Gure, namely Mohammed Abdullah Hassan and Sultan Nur Ahmed Aman, who rescued Somali soldiers from across the Horn of Africa and began one of the longest African conflicts in history. The news of the Incident that sparked the 21 years long Derby Rebellion, according to the Consul General James Heiss Sandel, was spread, or as the claimant was concocted con by Sultan Nur of the Habr Yunis. The incident in question was that of a group of Somali children that were converted to Christianity and adopted by the French Catholic Mission at Berbera in 1899. Brother Sultan Nur experienced the incident firsthand or whether he was told of it is not clear but what it known is that he propagated the incident in June 1899, precip precipitating the religious rebellion of the Dervishes. The Dervish movement successfully estimated British forces four times and forced them to retreat to the coastal region. 
an assault of its, its citizens against the British. The Derby's movement received support from the Ottomans and Germans. The Ottomans government also named Hassan Emir of the Somali nation and the German government promised to officially recognize any territories the dervishes were to acquire. After a quarter of a century of military successes against the British, the dervishes were finally defeated by Britain in 1920 in part due to the successful deployment of the newly former Royal Air Force by the British government. As a result of their defeat, former Derby's territories were transformed into a British protectorate. Maherten Sultanate was founded in the early 18th century. It rose to prominence in the following century under the reigns of the resourceful Bokor king Osman Mahmud. His kingdom controlled Bari Karkar, Nugal, and also Central Somalia in the 19th and early 20th centuries. The Major Ten Sultanate maintained a robust trading network, entered into treaties with foreign powers, and exerted strong centralized authority on the domestic front. The Maher Teng Sultanate was nearly destroyed in the late 1800s by a power struggle between Bokor, Osman, Bahamut of the Maher Teng Sultanate and his ambitious cousin Yusuf Ali Kennedy, who founded a separate kingdom, Sultanate of Hobio in 1878. Initially, Kennedy wanted to seize the control of the neighboring Maherten Sultanate ruled by his cousin Mahmud. However, he was unsuccessful in this endeavor and was eventually forced into exile in Yemen. Both sultanates also maintained written records of their activities, which still exist. In late 1888, Sultan Yusuf Ali Kenadid entered into a treaty with the Italian government, making his sultanate of Hobio an Italian protectorate known as Italian Somalia. His rival, Bokor Osmak Mahmud, was to sign a similar agreement vis a vis his own Maherten Sultanate the following year. In signing the agreements, both rulers also hoped to exploit the rival objective of the European imperial powers so as to more effectively assure the continued independence of their territories. The Italians, for their part, were interested in the territories mainly because of its ports, especially ports of Bozazo, with coal grant them access to the strategically important Suez Canal and the Gulf of Aden. The terms of each treaty specified that Italy was to steer clean of any interface in the Sultanate's respective administrations in return for Italian arms and annual subside the Sultan conceded to a minimum of oversight and economic concessions. The Italians also agreed to dispatch a few ambassadors to promote both the sultanates and their own interests. The new protectorates were thereafter managed by Vincenzo 
Filonardi, Drug Akarate Company, an Anglo-Italian border protocol was later signed of 5 May 1894, followed by an agreement in 1906 between Cavalier Pestalozza and General Swain acknowledging that Baran fell under the Magyartan Sultanate's administration with the gradual station into northern Somalia of Italian colonial rule. Both kingdoms were eventually annexed in the early 20th century. However, unlike the southern territories, the northern sultanates were not subject to their rule due to the earlier treaties they had signed with the Italians. Following the Second World War, Britain retaining cont control of both British Somaliland and Italian Somalia as protectorates. In 1945, during the Potsdam Conference, the United Nations granted Italy trusteeship of Italian Somalia, but only under close supervision and on the condition first proposed by the Somali Youth League, another nascent Somali politician organization such as Hizbia Diril Mirifle Somali and the Somali National League that Somali achieved independence within 10 years. British Somalia remained a protectorate of Britain until 1960. To the extent that Italy held the territory by UN mandate, the trusteeship Provision, provisions gave the Somalis the opportunity to gain experience in political education and self-government. These were advantages by British Somaliland, which was to be incorporated into the new Somali Republic state, did not have, although in the 1950s British colonial official attempted through various administrative development efforts to make up the past neglect. The, top, the protectorate stagnated. The dynasty, the disparity between the two territories in economic development and political experience will cause serious difficulties when it came time to integrate the two parts. Meanwhile, in 1948, under pressure for the Second World War allies and to the dismay of Somalis, the British ceded official control of the Houd, an important Somali grazing area that was brought under British protection via treaties with the Somalis in 1884 and 1886, and the Ogaden to Ethiopia, based on a treaty they signed in 1897, in which the British ceded Somali territory to the Ethiopian Emperor Menelik in exchange for his help against raids by Somali clans. Britain include the provis so that the Somali nomads would retain their autonomy, but Ethiopia immediately claimed sovereignty over them. This prompted an unsuccessful bid by Britain in 1956 to push back the Somali lands it had turned over to the Kenyan government despite an informal Previously, demonstrating the overwhelming desire of the Georgian population to join the ne newly formed Somali Republic. 
A referendum was held in neighboring Djibouti, then known as French Somaliland, in 1958, on the eve of Somali's independence in 1960, to decide whether or not to join the Somali Republic or, or not remain with France. The referendum turned out in favor of a continued association with French, largely due to a combined yes vote with the Sisable Afar ethnic group and resident Europeans. There was also with the spread border region, with the French expelling thousands of Somalis before the referendum reaches the polls. The majority of those who voted no were Somalis who were strongly in favor of joining a united Somalia and had been proposed by Mahmoud Harbi, vice president of the government council. Harbi was killed in a place crash two years later. Djibouti finally gained its independence for France in 1977 and Hassan Gaulet Abtidum, a Somali who has campaigned for, an, for a yes vote in the referendum of 1958, eventually wound up as Djibouti's first president from 1977 to 1991. British Somaliland became independent on 26th of June 1960 as the state of Somaliland and the true territory of Somalia, the former Italian Somalia. Follow a sweet five days later. On 1st of July 1960, the two territories united to form the Somali Republic, albeit between boundaries wrapped up by Italian and Britain. A government was formed by Abdullah Issa Muhammad and Muhammad Haji Ibrahim Egal. Other members of the trusty ships and protectorate governments with Haji Bashir Ismail Yusuf as president of the Somali National Assembly, Aden Abdullah Osmat Dar as the president of the Somali Republic, and Abdul Rashid Ali Shermarke as prime minister, later to become president from 1967 to 1969. On 20 of July 1961, and through a popular referendum, the people of Somalia ratified, ratified a new constitution which was first drafted in 1960. The constitution was rejected by the people of Somaliland. In 1967, Mohammed Haji Ibrahim Egal became Prime Minister, a position to which he was appointed by Sarmarke. On 15 October 1969, while, while paying a visit to the northern town of Last Anot, Somalia's then President Abdi Rashid Ali Sarmarke was shot dead by one of his old bodyguards. His assassination was quickly followed by a military cop detat on 21 October 1969, the day after his funeral, in which the Somali army seized power without encountering armed opposition, essentially a bloodless takeover. The putsch was spearheaded by the Major General Mohamed Siad Barre, who at the time commanded the army. Alongside Barre, the Supreme 
Revolutionary Council that assumed power after President San Marcos assassination was led by Lieutenant Colonel Salah Gabeire Kadille and Chief of Police Jama Korshel. The SRC subsequently remained in the country, the Somali Democrat Democratic Republic, dissolved the Parliament and the Supreme Court and suspended the Constitution. The Revolutionary Army established large-scale public works programs and successfully implemented an urban and rural literacy campaign with help it dramatically increase the literacy rate in addition to an nationalist nationalization program of industry and land the new regimen's foreign police policy placed an emphasis on somalia's traditional and religious links with the arab world eventually joining the Arab League in 1974. The same year, Barre also served as chairman of the Organization of African Unity, the predecessor of the African Union. <laughs> ولقرونا لما ذي قل كحيس وعاني مركز جعان وقادنا خطري كل جد بناني وحبذا جوانا دي صرنا وحرد قلي 